Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Gottlob Outer Space pinball machine for a customer. Some people would say that it was a Gottlieb Outer Space pinball machine that we were repairing for a customer. But if you didn't see the part one, you really missed out because we worked through everything and then at the end of the video, it ended up that we had all kinds of stuff wrong with it. We made a whole list. I think it was like 30 or 40 things on there or something like that. Maybe, maybe not quite that many, but it is a bunch. And uh, so in this video, we're going to go through and knock them out one by one and see if we can get this thing to work. So hopefully by the end of the video, we'll have this thing up and flipping. But uh, yeah, so we're kind of in the middle of getting it fixed. We've basically went through in the first video and we cleaned all of the switches and adjusted the relays and messed with the score motor and cleaned all of the uh, the uh, score uh, reels in the back and all of that and replaced all the light bulbs on the on the uh, play field and got rid of a hacked up wire and a couple other things. So we've done a lot. So you really missed out if you didn't see it. Uh, but let's get back into it. Uh, we'll go back over the testing part here at the beginning and uh, we'll show you what happened when we tried to uh, test it and get it to play and then we'll fix it. Okay people, so I finished up with the score mode, the score reels and like I always do, I left them on one so that whenever it resets we can see if they all reset. I have no clue what this thing is going to do, I haven't plugged it in yet or anything. I don't even know if the power is on on it. So it might start resetting as soon as we plug it in. Nope, it's turned off. Okay, so I'm going to hit the power switch and see what we get. Oh, wait a minute, it might be on. Nope. Do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. Sounds like it's trying to reset the bonus unit to me. There we go. Sounded crazy, didn't it? It was trying to get the bonus unit back to zero, I believe. Okay, so the game overlight is on, the tilt light is on. That back glass doesn't look that bad. That bad. I haven't replaced the light bulbs behind the back glass yet, so some of that's still going to be a little off. Okay, so I'm just going to try to start a game. We're going to see if it resets and if it'll kick the ball out. We don't have any play field lights yet. I don't know if that's right or not. Let's see if we can get her to do anything. Boy, I like the sounds of that, but it didn't kick the ball out. But hey. Hmm. Did not kick the ball out. We're on player one. It says ball and play number one. Remember we were, we had some uh, ball kicker issues. Ball. Didn't. <laughs> kick out. Okay, why would that be, you think? Let's see if I can... Maybe it's not on the switch properly. I'm trying to... adjust our switch. It seems as if it's on it. I'll kick it out my, myself. Okay, so let's see if anything will score or if we got a bigger problem. That didn't work. Okay, the thousand worked. Uh, let's get us a hundred. All right, I think the hundred point relay is locked on because the. Uh, Okay, so the 100 points isn't scoring. Okay, so whenever you score a score, so like you get 100 points, what happens is the 100 point relay pulls in and tells the, the reel to turn over to 100 points. 
if the whenever the reel turns over to 100 points, it opens that end of stroke switch I was talking about, which kills the power to the 100-point uh, uh, relay because it lets it know, okay, it went ahead and scored 100 points. And the reason that they put that in is so that, like I was talking about, if you, uh, if you score like 500 points, it needs to pulse five times, and it... it uh, it holds the relay in long enough. Well, it's even if you score 100 points. It basically the relay has to hold in long enough to make sure that the reel turns all the way around, that that plunger pulls all the way in. And so they have that set up like that, where when it pulls all the way in, it opens a switch, that end of stroke switch we were looking at, and it kills the relay. So whenever I just uh, scored uh, 500 points, it all turned around or whatever, but it uh, it never gave me 100 points. So why didn't the why didn't the um, reel turn over? Well, it's either a bad, misadjusted, or dirty switch on the hundred point relay, or it's on that score reel the uh, the little switches that it rides on the edges uh, that we were looking at. The one that sends it power uh, whenever it's in the zero position or whatever doesn't work. So uh, we'll have to look at that. That's why I wrote it down. Okay, but it looks like the thousand point one. Is working so this says advanced bonus and 1,000 points so it gave me a thousand points and it advanced the bonus our seven light is out now remember how on our little bonus wheel we were saying that it looks like you can go up to 15 so it stopped at 15 that's right. 7,000 light. Okay. Uh, 3,000 points when lit. Okay. So that didn't roll over. 10,000 doesn't roll over. Mm. We're getting some little issues here, people. Uh, but it did score 3,000 points, so that's good. I'm trying not to hit anything that's uh, 100, because I don't think the 100s are working. Uh, where's our little... This may give us 10. Hmm. That's not carrying over either. 100... didn't roll oh you know why so why didn't it score a hundred it's because my hundred screwed up remember so yeah like so the, the hundred relay is pulled in right now so what I'm doing is I'm taking the score motor out and I'm manually I'm in the score reel out and I'm manually turning it over a hundred and that's turning off the hundred relay because it's breaking the end of stroke switch so we need to still look at that. Okay, uh, what else can we do? Oh, let's see if our very target works, because it's suspect too, people. That didn't seem right. So it's not the little, the spring is not letting it go back forward. But I should have got more points than that. I only got a thousand points. Still only got a thousand. There's a little spring that it lets go and it won't go back. All right, so that too. Very target. Doesn't score. Very target. Doesn't reset. All right, uh, the hundreds are screwed, so that's not working right. So the hundreds and the five hundreds are a bunch of stuff on the play field. None of that is working right. Okay, so we're going to drain the ball and see if we get our bonus. So it looks like I should get 15,000. We're at 5,000. Oh. oh, the damn ball eject coil is stuck again. 
also screwed up. Eject mech jams. So basically the thing that pops it up through the play field, it's stuck up. It was doing that earlier too. Alright, so we got some major issues. The first one I want to fix is the 100 point thing because uh, I can't test the rest of the scoring without that. So let's see what the hell's going on there. Alright folks, so this is the plunger that was in the, uh, the out hole kicker. You can see it's got a little wear on it. Look at that. Look how high def that is. Everybody's always saying I need a new camera. Look at that. I finally have it showing up pretty decent. I think it's the lighting actually that makes it look blurry and stuff. But anyway, see how that's all worn out? So what, it was, what was happening was when the plunger pulled all the way in, it could actually pull a little bit too far and it would twist this around like that and get jammed. You may have seen it whenever, whenever I was showing it earlier. So the way I fixed it is I put a brand new plunger. And so this is actually a, uh, uh, this is a Gatlin pinball machine, but this is actually a Williams flipper plunger, but it's the exact same length. It's just this fiber link at the top is made differently so it can't twist around. The other one was, since it could keep going, it would allow this to travel too far and the whole thing would get jammed. So, so we have got that. Nice and snappy. I'm working on the very target. Basically, whenever it gets knocked back, there's, there's two little blades that touch the two rivets, depending on how far back it is, but they're not lined up perfectly. So I'm going to just loosen this screw and this other screw and move that disc so that whenever it stops down here on the the little hip that it stops on on each one that it'll be aligned up right over the rivets and that should fix where it wasn't scoring the thing where it wasn't resetting uh, the spring I tightened up a little bit and I also uh, oiled this metal shaft um, goes into another shaft in here so I oiled that and I've got it now where it's resetting even upside down. So like fighting gravity, it's resetting. So it should reset fine. But if you make that spring too tight, you can't knock it back very easy. So you gotta, you gotta keep it where just anything will knock it back, you know, so that the ball will be able to knock it back. Uh, so I probably, I think I've got that right, but I need to adjust that little, move that little blade or that little uh, Bakelite thing around a little bit. Okay, so both of the flippers are really weak. So one of the reasons is because the flippers need to be rebuilt a little bit. This fiber link, they get worn out. So if you see that there is movement, see how that plunger can move without the link moving? So whenever you hit that flipper, it has to make up that distance before it even starts to move, which makes it much weaker. So you can replace those. So these are new ones from uh, Pinball Resource. So there are these two little roll pins that you have to knock out, put the new one in, and then put the roll pins back. And that will get you brand new and flipping a lot better. We're also going to replace the sleeve inside of the, uh, inside of the coil with a new nylon one to make them nice and, nice and snappy. That's what you're always looking for, snappy. Okay, so here's the new link. Let's see if there's any play. Boy, if there's any play, it's minor. So hopefully that'll make our hopefully that'll make our uh, flippers a little stronger. You can also buy this whole piece. But what fun is that? All right, so we have been making some progress here. So remember, the ball didn't kick out. Uh, which is different than uh, the eject mech jams. <laughs> so the ball didn't kick out. So the eject mech jammed. You saw how I how we fixed that with the plunge with the new plunger, right? Uh, so that gets it uh, where all of that doesn't jam, but it will not kick the ball out. So I figured that out. So the ball didn't kick out. I'll show you how it kicks out and what was wrong with it. Which is why you need your schematics, people. If you're going to try to fix one of these, go ahead and bite the bullet and pay for the schematics. If you go to Pinball Resource, you can buy this exact schematic. I think they're $12 or something like that. So it's not that big of a deal. The only thing that sucks is you kind of have to wait, you know, for it to get here. But So there is the ball return coil. That is the one that uh, is not doing anything. And you see the way that it works. It comes over here. 
It gets its power from the O relay, which is the ball eject coil relay, right? Or what are they calling it? I shouldn't say that because that's not the actual name. It is the ball return relay. Okay. And then also through motor 4C, right? Now, after what I did was I popped the play field and I looked at that relay zero. And with the ball sitting on in the out hole, even with the play field popped, that relay zero never pulls in, right? So then you have to go backwards and say, okay, well, what makes the, the I keep saying zero, what makes the O relay pull in? Uh, so let's find it on here. It's right here. Okay. The O relay has power, and then it comes over this way. See how that's a switch on itself? So it can't get power through that switch. So usually it gets the power through the normally closed switch on the zero position bonus unit. Now in the other video, you may have noticed when I turned it on, it started going click, 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 click. And I was like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I think it's cool. Some of these machines, whenever they start, they want that uh, the bonus unit to be in the zero position because at the end of each ball, it counts down the bonus all the way down to zero because that's how you score it, right? And on this particular machine, it counts the, the bonus really slow. The, the score motor has to turn for each thousand that it counts. And it's just the way that it was designed. There is a little switch on the back of the bonus re, uh, relay unit. And uh, as the score motor turns, it resets at one position, 1,000 points. And if the switch is still closed, it gives you 1,000 points. And then it, the score motor turns some more. And it steps the bonus unit down 1,000 more points. And if the switch is still closed, it still gives you, it gives you another 1,000 points. And so it very slowly, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, it just takes forever to count down the bonus, which doesn't bother me because, hey, you're getting points the whole time, right? So whenever I turned it on, it started doing that. That was because I had turned the game off in the middle of a, of a game. So if the ball had landed in the out hole, it would have counted it down to zero at that point. But since I turned the game off when it was on 8,000 or whatever, when I turned it back on it went ahead and did the reset the bonus unit. So back to our back to our schematics, our scheme here. We want this to pull in, which is the uh, ball return relay, right? So the way it does is through this switch, which we'll talk about here in a second, the zero uh, position bonus unit switch. So whenever it gets back to zero, it, shut, it shuts that switch, which allows the ball to kick out. So the reason you want that in there is because you don't want the ball kicking out while it's still counting the bonus down, right? And then through uh, the ball return switch, so that is the switch in the hole, right? It's fine. That was the one that was bent all up and we fixed. And then through this uh, normally closed switch on motor 1C and then this one on 2B. So this one and this one you know are good because at the end of the ball... It is pulling in this P relay, which is the one that does the bonus countdown. So it's it's actually doing that if you land in the uh, in the out hole, right? So after looking at all this, I figured it would be that zero position switch on the bonus unit, but it was not. It was this switch. So there is a normally closed switch on the QB relay. The QB relay, uh, it tells me, is the game over relay which is kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> the game over relay during a game uh, is uh, not tripped, and it trips when the game is over, which I guess makes sense, actually. Uh, but while you're playing the game, that should be connected. So the reason that they did that was so that the ball can't kick out no matter what gets hit on the play field or scored or whatever if, there's no ga if the game is over, right? So if the game is over, it knocks off that switch is with, along with other ones and kills that. So that switch was just misadjusted. So I had already gone through and messed with them, but I missed that one. So that was that. So once I did that, it made it where the ball now kicks out. Bam! The 100 points not scoring, right? So we had that problem where not only would the 100 points not score, but the 
10 points whenever it rolled over wouldn't score 100 points either. So the 100 points is the L relay. No, the M relay. By the way, if you do, if you work on a ton of these, some of the some of the guys that do a bunch of these where they really know their stuff, the relays on on uh, Gottlieb Gottlieb's have a, a certain um, there's a there's a method to their madness. So like the like the M relay is the hundred point relay on like most of them. So they they use the same letters. That's why they actually use letters. M. So this is how you get your hundred points. Or actually, we're looking at how do you get 100 points on the first player, right? So how do you add the first player 100 units? Well, the way you get it is if there's a switch on itself, which allows it to hold in. Or I guess that might be for the reset, actually. Uh, so the way you get it is through the M relay, right? So the M relay pulls in and it adds you 100 points. So the M relay was locking on. Sure enough, looking at the relay, there was a uh, switch on it that was adjusted too far out. I adjusted it a little bit closer. Now it makes good contact, and you get your 100 points. It also fixed the the tens thing, where it went from 90, it would go to 100 the next time over. So that fixed the 100 points not scoring. Okay? The 7,000 light bulb. So this light bulb did not light up. It was because I needed to twist the light bulb. It wasn't in the socket very good. So we fixed that one. But 10,000 points also didn't roll over, right? Same thing, okay? So how do you add 10,000 points? You can't really score 10,000 points that I know of. Maybe. I don't, I don't think you can score 10,000 points at one time. So the only way to do it, really, is whenever the uh, thousands is at 9,000, and then it needs to go to 10,000. So that, uh, the K relay is the 10,000 point relay. So same thing with it. How do you score 10,000 points? Well, you have to go through the ninth position on the first player, thousands, thousands reel, which that switch seemed fine. And then a switch on Add the first thousands. That was there's one. There's a switch on the uh, like the end of stroke switch inside the thousand point thing. I, whenever I was showing you the end of stroke thing back inside the uh, score reels, there's one one a couple of them that that actually closes whenever the thing goes in. But anyway, so that looked fine. But then you get back here to this. What is this? So there is a switch on the L relay that does it right. So basically the L relay is the thousand point relay. So when it scores a thousand points, that also has to be closed, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, it's a completely different switch. That switch wasn't adjusted close enough. So I adjusted that one close enough, fixed it. Bam. So I'm just, I'm just trying to show you if you have a problem, if you get the schematics and you start thinking about it logically and going and looking at the area, you can figure it out. So I got that one. Uh, the hundred not rolling over we fixed whenever we fixed the hundred thing coming in. The very target doesn't score, so I showed you that, right? So the very target, uh, whenever it uh, went in, the rivets weren't lined up right, so that, that fixed that, right? We'll test all this here in a minute. Uh, the very target doesn't reset, same thing with the, uh, we, we messed with that. Uh, the eject mech jams, same thing, it was the, it was the plunger. The flippers are weak. So I showed you why the flippers are weak. And then the, uh, this was start relay stuff. I need to mess with the chimes, so we're going to do that too. So uh, let's, uh, let's start it again and see if we can, actually I already started the game. So we'll, I've got it started. Let's see if everything seems to be working properly. So we're on ball one, player one. Here's our 500 points again. Very nice. And then if I do it again, puts us up to a thousand. Isn't that awesome? Okay, and so we've got three thousand points when lit. Now remember that light, those light bulbs, those are held on by that switch at the top of the score motor that had the little thing broke off. So those probably have not been on for many years. Very nice. Okay. 
Over here it says 500 points and opens gate. They're talking about this gate. And we got our 500 points. This one is the light bulb. I need to twist that socket a little better. Okay. 100 points on this and it should spin the lights. Okay. And it was giving us points. Um, we've got 500 points here. That worked. 500 points there. That worked the same. Okay, so my little gate being open. If you hit this one, you get 3,000 points and it closes the gate. It's just like magic, folks. It's like magic. Pop bumpers should give us 100 points each. One. Notice it rolled over to 9,000. Three. Perfect. Um, we get 10 points on this. Bam, beautiful. Okay, now we're down to pretty much just the very target. And that freaking light bulb. Whoa, I hit the flipper. Okay, so the very target, as I knock it back, it should reset. Boy, reset a little bit too quick, right? Okay, so I'll call out what it says or what it appears to say. I think that was three. That's five, that's one. I think that worked all right. I couldn't look at both at the same time, folks. Okay, and then we were trying to get our bonus. So 15,000, here we go again. We're rewinding it. This is exactly what happened last time. 23.2, so I should get the 38.2, but listen how, how slow it counts down. So we should get the 38.2. the ball out and it moved us on to ball and play number two all right so uh, I guess we need to play it a little bit to make sure it's all right but we'll mess with the flippers it's got a little bit of a flip it's got a little bit of a flip to it ball and play number three this one I can't ever do I'm holding the camera with the wrong hand I'm just trying to test our flippers tragic accident with the with the uh, camera I was trying to get the flipper to work well the flipper works people now the hard thing is does it work hard enough to hit that damn very target good the very target works it's just can you hit it hard enough with the flippers so I think on this game I'm going to do something I never do, so we're in ball and play five. I'm gonna do something I never do, but we had one of these before, and the, the, the flippers were not the greatest, to be honest. So I'm going to see if I can high tap it. So I'll show you a little trick. All right, so we are down inside the cabinet. The transformer you can't see it from here. I'll put you down in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it though. But basically, on the side of that transformer, it says normal. And on the left there, it says high. So on some of these EMs, you can high tap it, they call it. So if you move that wire from there to there, it increases the power going to all of the coils. Now the reason that, it, that they put that on there was because if you put it in a location where the line voltage is lower than normal, everything might play a little slow, the flippers might be a little weak, the pop bumpers are a little weak, stuff like that, right? So you can move it over to there just in case you're putting it in a location that needs a little more juice. Right? <laughs> so over the years, a lot of home owners have figured out, hey, if I put this on there, make things more snappy. 
I don't usually like doing that, but the reason I'm going to do it on this one, I'll sh I'll show you why. Let me turn down the brightness. I'll show you why I'm why I don't have a problem doing it on this one, or at least we're going to test it. It's because this game doesn't have any drop targets for one. So if you do it on a game with drop targets, a lot of times you'll hit the drop targets so hard it'll break them. And then second of all, none of these plastics are broke anywhere on this machine, even though they're real old. And I think it's because there's none of them that are apt to break. <laughs> that's my that's my thought at least, you know. So uh, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. It may not work all that great. I don't know. We're going to try it though. Um, so I'm going to change that wire over to make put it on high tap and see if we can get the flippers a little stronger so that we can have a, a fair shot at that very target at least. So simple as that. You just move that one wire, but you make sure you, you know if you're going to do it, make sure that you make sure make sure you're moving the right wire. <laughs> don't, don't just move wires around because if you screw up a transformer, you will regret that. You will have a hard time finding that. Now it's also worth noting that that is actually listed on the schematics. See, they're showing you this is the primary side here, and then you have the side for the lights. And then you have a 25 volt side that runs all of the coils, but then they also show this other little dot over here, which is your high tap. So we have high tapped it, people. So I'll set up the tripod. Let's see if it if it plays well at all. I'll see if I if we note any other problems. Okay, so we're gonna bat the ball around a little bit and see if everything seems to be playing decent. Um, so we're basically just trying to find like minor problems. Boy, she's loud with the door off. Okay, ball one. Oh, and I have it set on five ball because that's how the customer had it set. So I'm just going to leave it how they had it. Normally, I put them on three ball. People have people have uh, argued about that for a long time. Some people prefer them on three. Some people prefer them on five. Uh, from my understanding, the way that it worked was when a new game came out back in the day, it was on three ball. And then they would change it to five ball when it got a little older to give you more value for your quarter that you were less likely to put in it because it was older. But, you know, the early, early games were definitely on five ball, so I don't know. So all of the coils are snappier, or should be. I don't know what that I don't know what that locked on coil was. Boy, I wish I could reach that bulb. That's driving me freaking crazy, people. It's driving me crazy. Here, let's do it where you can see it. Alright. So we're gonna fix it real quick. Because it's driving me nuts. Alright, so you spin the bulb a little bit. It's holding in the socket a little bit better. Fixed. No mas problema. Oop. I kind of want to hit that very target to see if I can at least get it to go halfway back. That flash you're seeing is the special light coming on and off. It's hard on these old games, it's hard to hit a dead ball like that and get any kind of strength out of it. Like whenever you're whenever you're cradling it, you can actually hit them farther if they um, if they roll at you. I knocked it about halfway back, but it didn't catch it because it was still resetting or something. I don't know. Oh, that, man, that was, that was cool. Did you see that? It went through the gate.
all five. Double when lit. Wonder what turns that on. All right, so that's the end of the game. All right, so a couple things I noticed. Uh, this light bulb here is lighter than the other ones. It's the same thing. Probably need to twist it in the socket a little bit. Uh, there are two lights on when it gets to here. That's because that little uh, relay with the little spinning discs on the side, those those little, they're, they're not lined up quite right. And so it's it's on two lights at the same time. It shouldn't be like that. It should just be one at a time. Uh, my light bulb that I fixed. This went back one spot to 2000 just off of the kicker, which is actually pretty good. So I think it's probably right. The flippers do seem stronger. Um, and there's not too much more we can do to them. We rebuild, we rebuild them, put new sleeves in them. Uh, I cleaned the end of stroke switches. I cleaned the flipper switches. Everything's cool. And we high tapped it even. Um, everything seems to be scoring right. So we're about there. So we just got some little minor things that we have to do. And the one last thing I want to do is mess with the freaking chimes. The chimes are always worn slap the hell out. So let's look at them real quick. All right, so here's the chimes. And the deal with them is if they get all, they get all sloppy, they have these rubber pieces that go in here. And once those dry out or break off or whatever, they start sounding slappy instead of pealing like a bell. So. That's what we got right now. So I'm going to take this one off and let's look at what's underneath it. Okay, so the problem that you get with the chimes, and this is on like pretty much all of them, is the way the whole chime works is this metal bar, like on a xylophone or whatever, it, it can't touch anything else metal. So if this metal touches that metal or that metal or this damn washer that they've got up on the top of it, you get this like kind of slappy sound to it. So it's got to be completely isolated from all the other metal. And then the little, the little uh, plunger comes up through the coil and hits it in the middle. And since it's, since it's isolated from the other metal, it allows it to vibrate and make the nice sound, right? So what always happens is that this thing is, what, uh, well over 50 years old now or something like that? Pretty close to 50 years old? So these, these little rubber things wear out. So you can buy those new. I don't have any. I don't have any on me, so I don't have it. I can't put new ones on it. But if you know that what you're trying to do is just get it where it doesn't hit any metal, you can you can fix them up with what you got. So like this one, the way it was mounted, the rubber had broke on the bottom, which means that this it allowed this to go down and touch the metal. You can actually see where it's hit the metal um, as it's, you know, so the, the thing will hit it and it'll move to the side and since the rubber is not keeping it up in the air right, the edge of the of the uh, bar might hit the metal or whatever. If it does that, it makes it sound bad. So if you turn the little rubber thing around, we're now the the good pieces on the bottom so it's got it isolated. The one on this side was pretty pretty fine. And put it back on, you're probably you're probably good. You can also use little rubber rings that you know from your play field. Um, sometimes these are too thick, though. If you lift the thing up, like like you put one of these under it to help it not hit the screw that goes through the hole or whatever. If you put one of these uh, under it, sometimes it lifts it up a little bit, which will actually make it a little quieter because the damn plunger doesn't hit it as hard because it's a little farther away from the plunger. 
So you basically just want to get it where it's where it's. You can't get it where it's held super tight. Like I already did this one. See how it's still loose, but the only thing that it can hit is other rubber, right? So when the when the plunger actually hits it, like it peels out, you know. So you just need to tighten them up where they don't hit, where they can't hit metal. You want them to you want them to only be touching rubber, and that includes the screw that goes through the middle. So you can't just put a piece of rubber on the top and the bottom because then it'll hit the screw in the middle and it gives you the same problem. So I'm going to touch those up a little bit and then let's see what they sound like. Let's see if that sounds any better. It said over three times, remember. Oop. So we've got a 10, a 100, and a 1,000. 10, 1,000. <laughs> All right. I definitely think it sounds better. It's flipping better. Main thing I don't like is those lights in the middle not being quite right. Okay, folks, I think that'll about do it for this video. We got everything about how we want it. The only thing was, like I was saying, those two lights, I took the thing out and uh, worked on it, and I've got it where this one, 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 and this one all work perfect, but these two come on at the same time, and it's because that wiper blade just goes over there. So I adjusted it and adjusted it and adjusted it. No matter how I put it, it always does that, and I think the problem is that the little the little uh, contact on the little wiper blade has worn down so much that it, it just doesn't stay off the board quite as much as it would have when it was new. And so you can't really get it where it, it's perfect. So I've got it though where it's consistently lighting these two at the same time. So it'll go light, 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 light. So that's pretty good. Uh, Fix the light up there that was acting up. Put the lights in both of the score windows. Um, that's all lighting up. I put blinkers behind the uh, the name. If you don't know about that, they make these uh, these bulbs that are 455 bulbs that turn themselves on and off. So on these games, you know, they didn't have any kind of computer or anything uh, or transistor or anything even that could turn something on and off. So the bulbs themselves turn themselves on and off by, by just, uh, I guess heat does it. So, uh, put those in there. That's kind of cool because it makes the name kind of jump out at you and makes the game look like it has a little something going on, a little bit of an attract mode, but I think that'll do it. I'm Joey's going to do some cosmetic stuff on it tomorrow, like on the coin door. Um, uh, and so whenever we get that done, I did new, new, uh, apron cards. Whenever we get that done, we'll be able to, uh, We'll be able to film a video of it in all of its glory, doing everything. And we'll put the glass on it and play through it and do it the right way. So we'll film a video of it, of that too, just so there's a video of somebody playing a outer space that's on high tap <laughs> here on YouTube. So we'll see you on that next video. So if you're looking to buy a game, you can check out all the games that we have available right now on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com and it's got a bunch of 
arcade games, and every once in a while we get a couple pinballs and jukeboxes and things like that. Uh, so that's all of our list of things that we have available for sale right now. And you can also come see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. You've probably heard of Charlotte. You may have not heard of Rock Hill, but we're about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina, just over the South Carolina border. Drive past Carowinds, the amusement park, and keep on coming, and you'll find us. So you can come by and see us. We've got a, a showroom here full of arcade games that we're always working on, pinball machines, jukeboxes, stuff like that. Uh, I've even got a phonograph back there in the back that I'm going to work on pretty soon. I'll film a video of for you. Um, so we're always working on stuff like that. Now, if you can't come by and see us because you're nowhere near here, that's fine. We understand. Just comment below. Let us know where you're from. Tell us what you think of the video, and we'll try to shout you out in a later video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, too for taking the trouble to film all this for you. Hopefully it'll help you fix yours. We're not necessarily trying to make money off of you because, uh, 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 you know, we're just trying to record some videos so that there's kind of a history of this stuff down the road. Because one of these days, I'll be 150, and I probably won't even want to work on EM pinball machines anymore. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Come try me. It'll be well over 100 years from now, though. Uh, maybe none of us will be here then. I don't know. But these damn videos will be because they're digital. So uh, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about it. You'll also find in the comments and down in our description, we put a little link to something from Amazon. So the reason that we do that is if you go click that link and go to Amazon, it tells Amazon, hey, Lions Arcade, Joe's Video Games, sent these people here to Amazon. And then whatever you buy on Amazon, not what we linked, you can buy that if you want, but whatever you buy on Amazon, whether it's uh, uh, a school book or uh, food or a sports car, whatever you buy on Amazon, it pays us a small percentage of what you purchased because we sent you there with that link, right? So uh, a lot of people have been doing that. We really appreciate it because... Uh, helps us out but it also doesn't cost you anything it doesn't raise any of your prices or anything like that and so a bunch of people have been doing that we really appreciate it thank you thank you thank you um it doesn't tell us who clicked what or bought what or who's who or if anybody did it or whatever it just says hey this was purchased today blah 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 blah, blah. we're going to pay you a royalty for it so it's kind of fun it's like a little game we play every morning we get up and it's sometime during the day, we look at that list. I was going to say, first thing in the morning, we look at the list. No, it ain't like that. <laughs> we Believe me, if it was big money, maybe I would. But uh, every day, whenever we get up, eventually, we look on Amazon. And it gives us a whole list of stuff people bought by clicking our link. So, man, we love it. It's so cool. It's so cool. We can feel all of the warmth and the love from all the people all around the world buying stuff on, uh, on uh, Amazon. Nobody's bought anything really weird yet. People keep buying strange foods and stuff, but that's not really that weird. And so there was like some spices like a couple weeks ago that somebody bought. I thought it looked cool, so I bought that too. So uh, we appreciate that. Leave your comments below. We appreciate those too. We try to answer as many of them as we can. If they're, if they're uh, rude comments, usually we respond back rudely as well. You get in kind, but you'll find if you look at the responses to our videos, if you respond in kindly we respond in kind because hey this is the south and that's how we do it right <laughs> so uh, we appreciate all of you watching hope you had fun with it hope uh hope it'll help you get one of yours going and we're not necessarily trying to show you how to do it we're just showing you how we did it i'm going to copyright that phrase so uh we'll see you on the next video thanks for hanging out with us for yet another hour